Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope all you guys are closing your year out strong. Hope things are going the way you're going. Uh, you want them to go. Look, uh, this is going to be real brief, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get back to you guys before the end of the year because I'm about to do some uh, dad duty, which is my favorite. Uh, and, you know, most of my kids are grown, but I do have one that's still a minor. Uh, and, you know, just spending time there is great for me. Uh, and I still love on my grown kids. I'm meeting with my oldest son uh, at the top of next week. So that's that. But look, um, we're closing out the year. I've spent 30 years of my life sharing with you and talking to you about the things that are disruptors in the black community, uh, the disruption and the disintegration of the black family nucleus, the uh, dissension between black men and black women, the failure to properly socialize uh, and prepare young black men to walk into black manhood. But probably the most unique identity on the planet is black manhood in the United States of America. Uh, and to understand the importance and the magnitude of the responsibility and how to navigate it is immensely important. That's why I created black men lead as a rite of passage initiative and uh, as a resource center for young black men, young adult black men as well, who are trying to navigate the labyrinthine corridors of manhood or preparing for manhood. So that's that. Then our failure to effectively uh, develop the proper relationship with money, economics, financial literacy, and all things pertaining to the building of wealth. We fail dramatically at that. Uh, one of the things that I have been talking to you about uh, probably for about four years uh, intensely, probably 10 years in some way or another, but in the last six months I've been emphatic in trying to bring this point home is we are having a mental health, mental illness crisis uh, within the black community, within the black collective. And it's uh, manifesting itself differently in genders and age groups, but it is extremely pervasive. It is highly intensive and it's not uh, dissipating. And um, depression among black women is always high. Matter of fact, black women are most likely to be diagnosed with clinical depression. Uh, women are more likely to become depressed than men and black women are the most likely among women to be depressed uh, and we need to deal with that but now what's interesting is despite the fact that black women are more likely to become depressed black men are more likely to commit suicide for a number of different reasons and the dynamic behind su suicidation and suicidal ideations is distinct between male and females uh, depression is highly influential on either side, but the feeling of inadequacy is more potent among men and the inability or the feeling of being inadequate or unable to meet the demands of manhood is one of the driving forces behind it. But uh, there's also a growing uh, canyon uh, between uh, the rise in uh, severe psychosis uh, like extreme bipolar um, and uh, schizophrenia and uh, paranoid schizophrenia specifically and what that means in young adult black males who are now entering into the prison system and becoming homeless at alarmless, alarming rates because there's no uh, true pathway to getting them the assistance and the resources and the help they need based on the fact that they're adults. And I am uh, intent on finding a way to uh, close that gap to bridge uh, over the things that are right now in the way. And so I'm in the middle of doing an 18 month study on the impact of uh, extreme psychosis in black males over the age of 18 and how it's impacting homelessness, how it's impacting adverse childhood experiences in the home, how it's impacting mass incarceration, how it's impacting socioeconomics in the black community and what can be done about it. 
Uh, I am asking that people who believe in the work I've done, the research programs in the past, the programs that have come out of that, the program implementation and the direct engagement in the community, I am asking that you support it. Because here's what's going on. We are entertaining ourselves into destruction. We are entertaining ourselves into devastation. We are escaping through escapism, through consumerism, through all of these different facets. Look, we have this past holiday season up until New Year's, it'll come out to somewhere around $550 billion we've spent. Uh, less than 3% of that is spent on anything of intrinsic value. Definitely not on business, not on true empowerment and education, not on instruments of advancement and empowerment, all on material things that do not represent being an asset. In other words, there's no appreciation, there's no holding of value. Uh, we're talking about things that create a strong emotional charge initially at time of purchase, whether for our children or for our loved ones or ourselves, but have no long-term value. And we do that from October to December every year. We spend half a trillion dollars in three months and then talk about what we don't have. That has to change. We are literally laying the path to our own destruction through the behaviors and choices that we are making. We can talk all day long about the many schemes and machinations that are set forth by uh, the system. And we would be accurate in most of those assessments without question. However, uh, I have many times talked about uh, the African uh, proverb, the Afri African adage that says, um, if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. And I can tell you now that never has that been more true. Uh, yes, there are those who are on the outside. There are those who are seeking our demise and are looking to reinforce the mechanisms that oppress us. But they are effective because we are not taking the necessary steps. We're not making the necessary changes. We're not investing in the proper development of our youth. We're not investing in the strengthening of our homes and our families. We are not doing what it takes to prepare ourselves to be better. The answers are out there. The work has been done. The work is still being done, but it means very little when you don't take what's out there and you don't apply it, you don't develop, you, you don't invest in the advancement of your people. One of the things when I was researching uh, generational trauma uh, and multi-generational trauma um, as an explanation for a lot of the inexplicable behaviors and situations that uh, blacks as a collective find themselves in and I was uh, studying the Jews post Holocaust. One of the things, there were two things that I discovered. First thing I discovered is they never referred to themselves as victims. They always referred to themselves as survivors. The second thing is the amount of money they took. Granted, from money that was being given and all this stuff, this isn't singing the praises of any group. This is sitting up talking about what I saw that definitely made a difference. That was trauma. That was definitely trauma. There are a bunch of studies that I was able to uncover that laid the foundation for the studies I would do for my own people when it came to epigenetics. But the one thing that I saw is they were very willing to invest in research. They were very willing to invest in the studies that would explain the inexplicable. One of the inexplicables was grandchildren of Holocaust survivors were having very explicit dreams about, ish, about, about things that happened during the Holocaust, although they were not even alive at the time and they had never been told. They were literally dreaming. And so then 
the question came, well, how is that possible? Is it something spiritual? And actually what they found was it was a genetic thing. So in other words, basically what we now call epigenetic tags carried the little literal memory in the tag and was passed down through procreations when the 23 chromosomes of mom and 23 chromosomes of dad merged to create the 46th chromosome of the new embryo. It also delivered the emphatic tags. The tags are created and the more intense the trauma, the more emphatic the tag. A lot of tags are often washed away during the process of meiosis, which is uh, uh, the cellular reproduction of the reproductive system. So uh, where mitosis is how the, the vast majority of our, our cells in our body reproduce, meiosis is how our reproductive cells, the things that allow us to re procreate, reproduce. And, and especially in the female process where once a month a woman passes all that, well, all that stuff happens, but when it's emphatic enough, it still imprints, it still passes on. And we learn that, but the thing is, they would not have understood that and they would not have known how to do that. And what they found is environment can literally reduce the uh, impact of it. And over time, the environment can literally remove and heal. So environmental stress is immensely important. Matter of fact, one of the number one influences of cancer. So a lot of this, like I said, I've, I've, I've put so much time, energy, and effort to coming up with the answers of so much of what we have been misinformed about, misled about, or simply don't understand and know. And yet, we are happy being blind. And at some point, that has to stop. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here because I could talk about this literally all day. And I, that's not what I came up here to do. I came up here to unwind so I can prepare for my weekend for, with my baby. Um, and, you know, uh, spend time with her and let her love on dad while dad loves on her. And, you know, get back to it. So if I don't get back to you guys before Monday, I'm in this game. I'm in this thing. I'm in it to win. I'm in it to... Uh, give it everything I got, but it definitely will help if you guys will come along for the ride because this is a winner take all thing. This is a zero sum game. Somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna lose, and right now we're getting our ass kicked. We're losing. So again, this is my challenge. Show some love, show some support. Look in the description box. Click the link and give or give the organization's cash app handle. Um, as with so many other other uh, research projects. This is an ongoing one. I will keep, keep you up, uh, updated on the things that we discover, but I will publish the totality of it once it's completed. And then I will start the process of implementing instruments that engage and help. I will also be lobbying for, with state legislatures to change some of the policies and laws that will make it easier for family members to help uh, or get help for their loved ones. So with that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Thank you for lending me your time. Um, you guys have a wonderful weekend. I'm out.